Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am here by myself without Neon today, but I wanted to hurry up and cover this because it's something we have been telling you guys about for a while now. So today, I see and the Teamsters basically got together and had a rally in California. Now, if you remember last year when we had the strikes with the WGA and the, the SAG-AFTRA and all that, you know, the IOTC people were the ones that got, you know, kind of screwed over because they were supporting whether they wanted to or not the other strikes. We told you then they're going to be up for contract renewal this year. Well, ahead of that, they're basically saying, hey, there's not going to be an extension. Like, you got to get your, your act together and you got to have us a deal by July 31st. Is, that's when their contract ends. Because we're not going to, we're going to walk then. We're not going to pussyfoot around. And I don't blame them because they're watching all the actors and the writers get a bunch of protections. They should be getting the same thing. Better health care, better, you know, income things, residuals, that kind of stuff. Because everybody else already got it and they had to suffer while everybody else got theirs. So when it's their turn, if it gets that far, which I'm hoping it does it, and Hollywood might be kind of afraid to let it get that far, then the other people better walk out with them. Because they did, they had to, to stay down with everybody else. So it better work in reverse. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo. And we're going to talk about this. So this is in Variety. I knew about this rally for a couple days now. But I guess they, they did their rally. It was about 2,000 people were there. And Variety's covering it, saying that there was 2,000 crew members on Sunday. And Sean O'Brien, the president of International Brotherhood of the Teamsters, said the union should commit to withhold their labor and not grant an extension if a deal is not agreed by the deadline. We are not afraid to strike, he said. If these greedy corporations, whether it's Amazon, Netflix, Sony, Disney, etc., if they choose not to reward our members, they are putting themselves on strike. We will put them on their backs, on their knees, begging for mercy. And they can do it. Because we're talking about a bunch of different groups. We're going to, there's a bunch working together. Okay, here. So you're talking like, you know, all these different groups that do different things in Hollywood that are important, you know, special effects, you know, you have makeup, hair, whoever's under union with IATSE, all those different groups are going to strike if they don't get a deal. And it's a lot. And it's a lot of skilled labor. And they're not that easily replaced, you know, and, and they're going to have problems. They thought they had problems last year. They're going to have problems again because it, as it should go is everybody else walks and shuts down everything again. I don't know if Hollywood can take a round two of that after what happened last year. So they're talking about negotiations, negotiations with AMP tip um, are going to begin on Monday. So this rally is ahead of the in negotiations and the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Teamsters and the Hollywood Basic Crafts are going to jointly bargain for health and pension benefits. Um, I obviously, I teamsters and basic crafts will then bargain their separate agreements with the hope of having deals ratified by the deadline, which is again, not until the end of July. So you have plenty of time. Hopefully they, they, they don't put their heads up their asses. Um, at the rally, Matthew Loeb, the international president of IATSE, he was more moderate tone than O'Brien, but he said there's enough to go around. And he talked about AI. Because again, AI is something that could impact some of these jobs too, because if you have people doing special effects or different things like that, AI could be a problem. And we already saw them negotiate deals with the screen actors and with the writers. However, they're starting to walk some of that back already. Um, Loeb's opinion is that AI should not be used to replace jobs, but it should be used to lighten the load. The problem is, as soon as you start like letting the stuff in there, it's going to replace jobs. They're going to claim it's to lighten the load, but it's going to replace people. Because if you can do AI, have AI in there doing the job of 10 people, and you only need two or three to manage it. And so you're, you had 13 total, and now you have three, and the studio saves money. They're probably going to try to push for that. That's just the way it is. He said about AI. Those advantages need to take the pressure off our jobs so we can enjoy our families and live these lives and not have to work 80-hour weeks. I know for a fact, like the special effects and stuff that were that were unionizing through IOTSE, they were terrible conditions, like hours beyond. And like these directors and things would change their mind the last minute. And they don't understand that you can't just snap your fingers and fix it. It takes a lot of work to fix things. If they want to make a big change, it doesn't just quickly, it's not quickly changeable for them. And they don't seem to understand that. And it comes crunch time. And then we get these movies coming out with special effects looking like shit because they couldn't do it all. And then they're the ones that get blamed for it. Um, if that efficiency comes, it needs to come to us in our jobs. And we will use that to do our jobs better. We want some of the spoils of artificial intelligence. 
Um, so O'Brien said, we have a message for the white collar crime syndicates known as the studios. When you fuck with the Teamsters or any other union, it's a full contact sport. Put your helmets on and buckle your chin straps. I like him. Something I'd say. Um, 13 Ayati locals worked under basic agreement, including the International Cinematographers Guild and the Motion Pictures Editors Guild. There's a lot. There's a lot of guilds. And they all kind of are united under different groups. Another 23 locals around the country work under a parallel contract called the Area Standards Agreement. Jackie Martinez, a, a costumer, says she's worried that AI could be used to take away jobs. AI is definitely a threat. Agreed. Um, producers, I feel, are trying to reduce our crew numbers in our departments, and that's how they're trying to save money by using less of us. Yes, that's going to what that's exactly what they're going to do. We're, we're already seeing them start to to do this in, you know, the writing and in some of the other jobs that we just saw the the strikes over. And I know animation, they're running into this too, where it's gonna be real easy to replace a bunch of animators with AI when it gets to that point. Is it to that point yet? No, I do not believe it's to the point yet. But it can it be to that point soon? Yes. It is a definite something to worry about because by the time the next contract rolls around, AI might be significantly further ahead and it might be a, more of a threat then. Um, the second you start automatically generating bodies, they already have clothes on them. What am I supposed to do? One of my favorite parts of this job is interacting with background air actors and creating individual characters. I can't read. To create texture and scenes. Having a computer generate, that is not it. So basically, if you're a costumer and part of your job is to make a bunch of costumes for background actors and they just AI the actors in, one, you're losing acting jobs. And two, they're not going to need to hire as many costumers because it's all just being generated by AI. And you know what? If it looks like shit, because we saw, what was that one thing that, that everybody in the audience, looked, or everybody in the audience was the same person. They don't care if it saves them money. And until it takes a while, people will notice they don't care. They, they, Get, they make more profits, record profits, right? So they're talking about the upcoming talks were on the mind of many members of the American Cinema Editors, Eddie Awards, and the American Society of Cinematographers, A ASC Awards, and et cetera, et cetera. And these people are all worried about it. Um, they're talking about how there's lots of different issues and that are bringing up rust and the situation there with the armor and all the stuff that happened with that. And they're talking about, because that's another group that would be here. And they said, you know, that's another risk they have to worry about. Um, they're, they're still reeling from the SAG after WGA strikes. They cannot afford another strike. I agree. So I think Hollywood would be wise to not dick around. Now, I don't, depending what's asked for right now, they haven't done anything as negotiations start tomorrow. If it gets to the point where they're being ridiculous, like we saw with them, some of the demands of the writers and the actors and stuff, I'll say so. And you, you have to understand that negotiation meets, means you meet in the middle. It doesn't mean you always get everything you want. All right. And I know studios don't want to go to strike again, but I think they would let it happen if they demand too much. So hopefully, you know, given what happened last time and the fact that these guys don't want to be down that long again either, that there's reasonable demands on both sides. And that the studios are not going to be so effing stupid this time around where they're just going to like, you know, deliberately stall things out. But again, it's like, it's a two way street. And I remember the writers and the actors had some demands that were the writers, especially minimum writers in the room. And some of their demands were just downright stupid and they were not letting them go for anything. Same with the actors and that drug it out. And unfortunately, a lot of these people were the ones that got you know, had issues. So a lot of the big actors aren't going to face the same problems because they have lots of money, right? But background actors and stuff might have problems. Some of the other like writers on shows who aren't like the big writers that don't have big deals where they can pay a lot of money, they might run into problems. So I'm hoping they need to reach an agreement, but I'm expecting the other people from last year's strikes to back these guys this year. Because if you don't, you're a bunch of assholes. I'm just saying. So get ready for this one because if they don't, get some kind of deal together by the 31st of July, they're not going to extend. They're just going to strike. There's not like, they're not giving them a cushion and a second chance. They're just like, Nope, we're going strike. I can't blame them. So what do you think? Comment and let us know. We'll talk to you later. Bye.